Hey, good day, it's Prezzo. Thanks for stopping by. Now this is episode four of building a four facet drill grinding machine. There is a playlist for this series and the links up above there now. Now when I started today's episode, I realized I never actually said why I wanted to build a four facet drill grinding machine and, and why that's an improvement over a standard factory grind. So this is a large 25 millimeter diameter drill bit. It hasn't had a lot of use. So that's the original grind that's on the end there. And this is a four facet drill grind. And I did this one on my D-bit grinder. And you're probably thinking, well, if you can do that on your D-bit grinder, why do you need to build a specialized machine? Well, the answer is that I did this with a 10 millimeter 5C collet to hold the drill bit. And if I wanted to grind all of my drill bits, including the number drills, the letter drills, the imperial and the metric, I would need literally hundreds and hundreds of collets because a 5C collet is only really good for gripping the diameter that it's built for, for that it's designated for. Whereas the ER collets that the four facet drill grinder uses can grip everything from around about 1 16th of an inch up to about half an inch or 1.5 millimeters up to about 12 millimeters. And that covers most of the range of drill bits that I have. So one of the advantages of the four facet drill grind well, for one thing, it starts more readily. So it won't wander off from a spot that you've located for the center of the drilled hole. It also requires less tool pressure to push through the work and therefore it produces less heat. But they also tend to drill a bit closer to their nominated diameter. And you can see by looking at that, that it has this very special feature where the intersection between the two facets on each side of the drill intersect exactly on the center of the drill bit. So here's a diagram here showing you what that looks like if you look directly down the end of the drill bit. And there is a line passing from roughly or from exactly from 12 o'clock through to 6 o'clock and that's the junction between the two facets. Now what that does is it produces a pyramid point and that keeps the drill bit on track as you drill the hole. Now with a regular drill bit like this one here, there's a thing on the edge called a chisel edge. It's basically just a, like a flat uh, angular surface, a bit like the, the apex of a roof on a house if you like. And on this particular drill bit, that flat is around about five millimeters wide. And it's a bit like trying to drill a hole with the steel rule. So if you can imagine, where will I place that where you can see it? So if you can imagine placing that drill bit flat on the surface of the bench and then trying to rotate it around its axis and hoping that that will drill a hole, it's really not going to cut. It's going to wear and it will eventually make a hole if you put enough tool pressure on it. And when you're drilling with this sort of drill bit here, you'll often uh, have recommendations that you drill a pilot hole. The pilot hole should be at least the diameter of the, the length of that flat chisel edge there or slightly larger. And that you know, it gets around this issue of that chisel edge. So the you know, four facet drill grind, you don't have that issue. Now, I did grind that drill bit and I tried it out in this piece of steel here and that's the sort of hole that it produced and I did that without a center punch mark. I just started it and pushed it in and it kept on track and that's the chip that it produced and it made two identical uh, chips to that. So if I can get all my drill bits to cut like that, I'll be a happy, happy boy. So that's the aim and that's where we're headed with this. Uh, so what we need to do now is get on and make some more parts and uh, let's see if we can get it finished today, but we'll see how we go. First part we're gonna to make today is this vertical column here that's attached underneath the carriage plate with two screws. And this is the main pivot point for the trunnion plate. So the one on this side is fairly straightforward. This one's a little bit different. It's got this offset block and the reason for that is that this whole assembly around that pivot point has to fit inside the cup wheel. So this is the wheel that I'll be using. Now I've been advised that diamond wheels are better for this machine because you don't have to dress them, or at least don't dress them very often. And if you use an aluminium oxide wheel, you have to dress it and it changes the setup of the whole machine. Uh, only a small amount, but it's enough to mean that you have to reset things later. And the face of the wheel needs to align with this center line passing through these two pivot bolts. So it basically goes like that and then the whole carriage plate slides past the face of the wheel like that. So that's the reason why this has to have this offset in it. 
Now I've got a piece of aluminium stock in here. This is for the one on this side. Pretty straightforward. I'm just going to drill ream and I'm going to put a counter bore in the face of that stock there for a felt washer. Now that's just to try to keep some of the grinding grit out of this interface between these two plates here. So that counterbore there is three millimeters deep and I'll laser cut some felt washers to go in there. I can get the felt to be just slightly higher than that surface there so it'll compress and that should help keep the grinding dust and the grit out of that joint. Well, good thing I checked with my little mock-up part here because I nearly screwed this up big time. Um, I assumed wrongly that the hole was going to be in the same place but just have the extension on one side but in order to get the counter bore, I had to flip the part over or at least flip the position of the hole, which meant changing the entire setup. I also realized I was going to drill into my parallel, so I had to shift the parallel back. And uh, what I'll do now is just go ahead and drill and ream and counter bore. But I'm also going to drill a hole, which will form a corner radius in this internal corner here. So once I've got that done, I can flip the part up vertically in the bias and mill away all of the waste. So I've just positioned the center of that corner radius there. This is a 9.9 .9 drill, it's going to finish at 10. But you can sort of butt the mock-up into that drill bit and you can tell whether you got that correct or not. This is really just a decorative feature on the finished part. So I've repositioned this part now to chew out this corner here and I'm going to have to do that in two separate operations. So the first one I'm going to cut down to the bottom tangent points, basically the 6 o'clock position on that circular arc. And then you'll see me offset the cutter by 5mm and I'll 
go to the nine o'clock point on that same arc. I've got everything set up in the DRO, I just need to watch the numbers, that's all. I had to stop and second guess there for a bit. Uh, looked like I was going to cut into this corner radius down here at the 6 o'clock position, but I think it's turned out okay. So what I'll do now is I'm going to stand these upright on the bias and drill the fixing holes, but I'll do that off camera. It's pretty basic. All right, since the last video, I've gone ahead and I've fitted all of the hardware to the bottom of that carriage plate. So these wheels here, these are like a rubber roller, and uh, they engage in the V-slot, and that's what gives you the lateral movement and uh, you don't have to do that a lot of people choose to use a rail system with some plastic blocks to allow it to slide you don't need a lot of movement in this it's only about uh, 20 millimeters total so it's not like a high wear type of situation at all and this will need some spaces at the moment the the bottom of the screws uh, the, these screws here on the nuts are fouling on the bench top so we'll need some little spaces in there we'll do those shortly and uh, when I was assembling this, I can't believe you let me down this way, but can you see those, uh, or can you see that offset hole there? Yeah, that's not meant to be there. <laughs> and I was relying on you to tell me if I was making any mistakes and you let me down. Uh, so I don't know what went wrong there. I, I obviously used the wrong offset in my um, initial setup, but what I can do is I can fill that with either soft solder or I'll rivet a piece of round steel stock in there and then I'll powder coat all of that and you won't even see it but yeah it's fair to say I was a bit disappointed and some bad words were said but uh, yeah we can make it good now uh, the other thing we have to do is to make some pivots or pivot bolts and these are going to allow the trunnion plate to pivot on those centers there so these screws that I made these were just temporary for the mock-up and uh, you can see how it's going to work that's going to pivot like that. So I'm going to make those out of this um, hex mild steel stock. And yes, it's rusty, and that's how all mild steel goes in my workshop, but these will get zinc plated later on. So let's go and do those now, and we'll also make the spaces for the V-slot track. To make the spaces that go under that V-slot track there, I've got some three millimeter thick aluminium sheet, and I've just drilled a six millimeter diameter hole in the center there. And in the chuck here, I've got a piece of scrap aluminium and I've just left a six millimeter spigot in the center. And we can place our formed hole over that spigot there. And we're gonna do this by pressure turning. So I've got a just convenient chunk of steel here with a center in the end of it. And we're gonna use the tailstock to provide the pressure to drive that piece of aluminium. So as long as we don't take really deep cuts, uh, that should be fine. And these are just gotta come down to 40 diameter.
All right, so they're done. Uh, these will eventually get powder coated the same as the steel base for the whole grinder. So this is the hex bar stock that I'll use to make those pivots. So I've just cleaned this up on a scotch bright wheel to get rid of the rust. Well, there's our pivot bolt made now, and as you can see, that fits through that vertical upright there. And I decided not to put an external thread on this. This has an internal M4 thread. I can put a socket head screw in that and tighten that up, and that will lock that bolt against this part here. But it's still free to move on the uprights on the carriage plate, and there's enough clearance to allow that to happen. So. What you want to have is like an easy pivoting arrangement there, but you don't want it to have any side to side play. And the felt washers that I'll put on the inside there will help to dampen out any of that movement. Anyway, I'll get another one of these made and then we'll just flip this around, put it in a collet and finish off the head. Well there's the assembly done now and you see I've got the socket head screws in here with a washer and I can tighten that socket head screw by holding the head of the hex and that locks that uh, against itself. Now everything pivots really nicely and there's no side to side shake. So that was what I was after. Now there is a gap between those two pillars there but that's where the felt washer will go later on that will stop any grit getting in there. Hex heads hard up against this surface here and the washer is hard up against that one so hopefully uh, we won't get any grit going in there. I think we're going to go on next and we're going to make this little sector plate down here. It's just a piece of aluminium 
I'll start with a full disc and then I'll cut out the wedge shape later. Next part I want to do is this little cam. Uh, this controls the setting of the primary angle on the edge of the drill bit and you can rotate that around and the idea is that later on you calibrate that, put some marks on there for each of the angles that you might want to use. And uh, simple part, I'm just going to cut it out of this piece of round stock here and then part that off when I'm done. It's only 7mm thick, it's got a bit of a, like a step in the back of it. Well that part's done now and there is the 3D mock-up of that and as you can see it's got an offset hole or an eccentric hole and uh, there's nothing about that part that needs to be super accurate because it can be calibrated later. So I'm just going to part this off. The other side will need finishing and chamfering and I'll probably do that in my flexi chuck but let's get this off that stock now. The problem with that, uh, well, it's not really flood coolant, it's more of a trickle coolant, but the trouble is it never goes where you want it to, it always seems to run off at an angle, and I found that parting off aluminium with this rear parting tool holder is a breeze as long as you get the coolant in there. If you let it run dry, it will gall up on the edges, and you get that pattern that you can see there, and that was right at the start where the coolant wasn't flowing properly, but once the coolant picked up, we get this beautiful finish on it and I seem to have resolved the issue that I had with the flutter in the parting tool blade. So that finish there is pretty much blemish free but I will need to clean up and a bit of a chamfer.
So this gadget here is my flexi chuck. Now these are made by Eccentric Engineering here in Australia. And this uh, machinable jaw system here can be expanded. And I bought out a recess to fit the uh, projection on the back of this disc here. And I put that in there. And you don't need to be really precise because when I loosen the screw, the jaws will collapse down onto that part. So, um, right, so I just loosen that there, and that's now gripped. And because I've machined that recess, this front side will be parallel to the back side when I'm done. So there's that finished disc and this will need an offset hole drilled in it and I'm just going to use my 3D printed part as a drill guide. Now the reason I can do that is that this diameter is not important, the position of the hole is not critical. Uh, what I can do later on is I'm going to calibrate the wheel with some marks on the face of the wheel to correspond to different primary facet angles on the drill bit. So we can set up the trunnion plate, set the angles, mark it and then we'll inscribe that on that wheel. Right, I'll just deburr that and then that part's finished for now and will need to be calibrated with those marks later. I've got to cut this sector plate out of this disc now and uh, I'm just going to get lazy. <laughs> I'm just going to scribe around that. I'm just going to use that as a template. The only critical thing about this part is the radius from the pivot hole to this outer edge. Everything else is irrelevant so it's not worth doing tricky setup on the milling machine. I'm just going to belt sand those edges and the round on the end there. Uh, that's good enough. 
We're running out of time today's episode, so I've done a few jobs off camera here, but they were just basic sort of work. But that little flip plate is now finished and attached, as you can see there. And I think that that's meant to be fairly loose. And the idea is that when you raise the trunnion plate, this will automatically drop into position to give you the secondary relief. And then you push that out of the way and it will drop back down onto this eccentric wheel here for the primary relief. Now, I've also drilled and tapped the base plate and this is where those spacer washers will go. And then the V-slot track will sit on top of that. So I'll get that assembled and we'll put the rest of it together and I'll just show you what I mean. So that's it assembled at this point and as you can see that will traverse backwards and forwards on the face of the cup wheel. Here's a fairly good close-up view of how the system is going to work. So this eccentric wheel will have a number of mark positions on it and they will correspond to the different angles you'll need for the primary relief on the drill. So this can be rotated to any of those positions and this will need to be calibrated later on to a number of known angles. Now when you uh, ground both of the primary reliefs on the end of the drill bit you can lift the trunnion plate and that little sector plate automatically drops down into position and that sets the angle for the secondary relief so you would grind both sides and then you'd swap out the drill bit you'd push that back out of the way and drop it back down onto the eccentric wheel and go again so in the next episode we're going to get the traverse mechanism set up so we can grind the tip of the drill and traverse that past the wheel in a controlled manner. I'll get the grinding spindle set up in this space here. Now it will need to have a very small range of adjustment so we can move the face of the cup wheel into the correct alignment with this axis through the uh, trunnion plate here. So we'll need to build in a small amount of movement with that, only a couple of millimetres is necessary. And then we'll do some drill grinding and we'll see how that works out. And then in a further episode, I'm going to do all of the finishing processes for this tool. So this plate will need sandblasting. We're going to powder coat that. We'll do all of the anodizing. We'll do all the engraving and we'll make it look pretty. So join me for that and I encourage you to come along and have a look at this thing working, which I'm hoping is happening in the next episode. So uh, yeah, join me. It should be a heap of fun. Okay, it's Prezzo signing out for now. I'll see you next time, and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.